أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين We were speaking about the importance of Tazkiyah and we said that along with uh, understanding that Bi'athatul Anbiya, uh, the sending of prophets, was based on uh, a main objective being uh, Tazkiyah of people. Another reason is that this is what's going to be presented by us to Almighty God on Judgment Day, our akhlaq, our a'mal, our deeds. And we mentioned that akhlaq doesn't just mean uh, mannerism and uh, behaving in a nice way or being polite. No, it's deeper than that. It's really, really deeper than that. And unfortunately, a lot of people are just focusing on that level of mannerism, but not all of these other things of how a person is going to be able to adopt, for example, taqwa and wara and haya and ifa and all these very important characteristics. You know, one of the things that we really, really suffer is the sins that are uh, brought about by our own tongue. You know, according to our ulama al akhlaq say there are up to 70 sins that our simple uh, tongue is able to commit. And all of them, one is worse than the other. One is worse than the other. You know, you've got hadiths that say that if all evil was to be uh, contained in one room, the key to that room is al-kidb, is lying. You know, and subhanAllah, you know, that the that those very, very harsh uh, shaking a hadith when it comes to ghibah, when it comes to backbiting. I'm not even going to mention how severe backbiting is. Um, sure, all of you know it, but yet look how prevailing, unfortunately, backbiting is. And so for some, it's so easy for them uh, to backbite, to gossip, to do all of these other things. And so... Again, if we were to, you know, the main point that I was trying to make is focusing on ourselves. In the previous episode, episode, I said, focus on myself. I want to focus on myself. I want to minimize my fixation on others. And I want to see what I have as far as my faults, as far as my flaws, and focus on that. I also want to understand akhlaq in a deeper way. It's not just about mannerism or about being polite or uh, it's more than that, it's way more than that. It's about taqwa, it's about wara, it's about iffa, it's about haya, it's about these deep core kind of meanings that we have in our religion, uh, Islam. And so, you know, you can't pick and choose and say, oh yeah, well, akhlaq means, you know, for you to have a sweet tongue and be nice and polite, but yet, you know, um, I don't really care about what I do in my private life. Um, I don't have that interest in doing this or, or doing that, or I don't, you know, uh, observe ma uh, issues of uh, akhlaq when it comes to how I um, present myself, how I am dressed and all these other things. This is really, really important, very important. And that's why, you know, um, putting um, ourselves on this mindset of the importance of tazkiyah and self-purification and commencing our um, spiritual journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we need to do is, of course, we need to put some effort and invest some time and research about this. You know, what does taskiya mean? What does takhliya mean? What does tahliya mean? Taskiya means purification. Takhliya means to uh, empty, to vacate, to remove. Right? Takhliya. What does that mean? It means you removing your the sins from your nafs, removing it altogether. What does tahliya mean? Tahliya means that you adorn yourself from al huli uh, And that means adornments, it means decorations, like zina, for example. You adorn your nafs with good virtues, with... Um, positive things with fada'il, removing yourself from radha'il, adorning yourself with uh, fada'il, very important. And that's why 
you know, okay, well, which one of these comes first? Is it first of all takhliya or is it first of all tahliya? Researching is very important. And I'm sure, inshallah, all of us would uh, have that interest in wanting to uh, not only keep ourselves pure, but expand and excel and get better and better in what it is that we are uh, going to do. But in any case, you're always going to have difficulties. You're always going to be struggling with your nafs. You remember when I said that your worst enemy is your very nafs. And that's why this battle is an ongoing battle. You're going to be combating, you're going to be fighting. And it's all based on starting your self-discipline, starting that um, pursuing of um, all this work that is needed. Most importantly, مُخَالَفَةُ nafs, going against your uh, nafs. Question, what is nafs? We're talking about tazkiyatul nafs, we're talking about nafs this, nafs that. What is your nafs? Now here, it's not a very easy answer, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. But we understand that, of course, the word nafs has been mentioned in the Holy Quran many, many times. We also understand that it all depends on the uh, context of what is being mentioned. So the nafs has different meanings. One time it could mean your ruh, your soul. Another time it could be, it could mean something else. It could be referring to that very self of yours. That's why nafs is that very self. You know, soul, and you know, even in the Arabic language, they say nafas. Nafas means breath. So, uh, and, and that comes from Noon fa sa, which is also what nafs is from as well. Well, you know that Islam focuses on the nafs, and Islam um, has that uh, special kind of uh, meaningful words in the Holy Quran that uh, allude to this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt, that every Soul here, of course, will be tasting death. In another, uh, in a hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, "Al-ruhu fil jasad kal ma'na fil laf." That your ruh in your body, and that's in reference to the nafs in this particular context. Your ruh, because your body, your physical body, is like a vessel. And what is uh, hiding inside it, what it is using it is your ruh, your nafs. And that's why when you see a laf, when you see a word, a statement, it has a meaning, doesn't it? So here, Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, he says, Ar-ruh fil jasad kal ma'na fil laf is like a meaning that exists in a word. The word are just a combination of letters. But is that all it is? No, there's something behind it, and that is the meaning. And so, one way of looking at the word nafs is uh, your soul, the immaterial entity, uh, that mujarrad entity that is occupying your body, that's connected to your body. Now, is that all that it is? And is that what we are referring to when we're talking about tazkiyatul nafs? The answer is no, that's not what we're referring to. Because, yes, although the, the soul is not completely immaterial, because the soul is going to be going through different stages it's in this dunya we, uh, life, and then it continues on in barzakh, and then it continues on in uh, qiyam, um, in Qiyamah as well, on Judgment Day as well. But what we are going to be referring to, or what we are concentrating on, is that spiritual side of not the ruh, but rather that very side, that immaterial side of our physical being, that nafs, and of course, 
um, like when we see uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about um, al, the, the nafs in the sense of a nafsul amara, for example, or wala uqsimu bil nafsil lawama, for example. Is that in reference to the ruh? No, it's to do with this uh, entity, this part of ourselves that is uh, in constant change, in constant change. And so, with the Qur'an using it in this particular way, not to mean the soul, but to mean something that has a different dimension, which could be good and also could be bad. I'm sure you've come across all these many, many ahadith from Ahlul Bayt السلام, that speak about ma'rifatul nafs, ma'rifatul nafs, recognizing your nafs. You don't need to recognize your soul. You know that your ruh, your soul is there, right? But recognizing yourself. Why? Because the more you become familiar with your nafs, the more you will have it under control. The more it will be um, at your disperse. You'll have that reins. You'll be holding the reins of your nafs. Um, similar to how you are able to hold the reins on a horse and direct it in the way that you want, whether you want it to, to go fast, whether you want it to go slow, whether you want it to stop, whether you want it to continue, etc., etc. And that's why, you know, you know, we come across these ahadith in reference to ma'rifatun nafs, man arifa nafsa faqad, uh, arifa nafsa faqad arifa rabba, one who knows his Nafs knows his Lord. I'm not going to go into the details of what this means, but I'm sure all of you have uh, come across these kind of many, many ahadith. And ma'rifatun nafs is a part of tazkiyatun nafs, is a part of ilm uh, al-akhlaq as well. It's an extremely important area. You know, you want to know about tazkiyatun nafs, in order for you to know about tazkiyah to nafs, you need to recognize your nafs. In order for you to want to uh, excel and get better and better in tazkiyah to nafs and in ma'rifah to nafs, you need to know what's the opposite, and that is ma'rifah to shaytan as well. You know, you want ma'rifah to Allah, you want ma'rifah to shaytan. All these ma'arif that you are trying to pursue are all very, very important. Ma'rifah to shaitan is also important. I'm going to be mentioning that very, very soon. But look at this beautiful hadith um, from, actually there are going to be two hadiths that I will be mentioning from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. But just before that, there's this beautiful po um, poem attributed, mansub ila amir al mu'minin attributed to Imam Ali alayhi salam, where he says, Al-nafsu tabki ala dunya وَقَدْ عَلِمَتْ That the nafs is crying over the dunya, yearning, wanting uh, the dunya, this nafs of ours. We really want this dunya, we're crying over the dunya. But we know, وَقَدْ عَلِمَتْ But this nafs knows, إِنَّ السَّلَامَةَ فِيهَا تَرْكُ مَا فِيهَا That the well-being, that the well-being of your nafs is abandoning that which is in the Dunya inna salamata fiha tarkuma fiha. Subhanallah. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, talking about this nafs, talking about ma'rifatun nafs, talking about having control of um, your nafs. Man malaka nafsahu idha ghadiba wa idha raghiba wa idha rahiba wa idha ishtaha. حرم الله جسده على النار. If you control, if you master your nafs in these four times, إذا غضب when you get angry you control your nafs. وإذا رغب and when you desire something you control it you keep it under control you make sure that it doesn't exceed its boundaries. وَإِذَا رَهِبَ And if you fear something, if you're concerned about something, you don't allow it 
to turn into, for example, paranoia or something like that. And if you desire something, if you desire something, if you have these four under control, حرم الله جسده على النار. Allah subhanahu wa taala will prohibit your body from entering hellfire. Subhanallah. And on the other side, as we mentioned, the other side of معرفتُ النفس, we need to make sure that we also master our understanding of recognizing our enemy. You remember when I said, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. You remember I I said that one of the things that we need to always uh, acknowledge is how we are able to overcome these challenges of our nafs that is within our own self. The worst enemy is your very self that is in between your two sides. I need that you're in within your very body, right? And here again, you know, we're talking about when it comes to, you know, the shaitan, know thy enemy, as they say. Know it, recognize it, understanding it. Last uh, holy month of Ramadan, I had a series of probably around about 20 episodes talking about ma'rifatul shaitan, talking about recognizing and knowing uh, the shaitan. I think it's a very important topic, and I think all of us should pursue in knowing and understanding the shaitan, uh, shaitan's manipulative ways. What is Iblis? Who is Iblis? Uh, what are the shayateen? And how we are able to keep ourselves away from it. And that's why most Tazkiyah books speak about this in detail um, as well. And of course, we know that because we're in constant battle, um, how are you going to be able to defeat your enemy? Let me share with you uh, what Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq says in this regard. And by the way, it's a it's a um, very interesting hadith. It's a little bit long, but I've just uh, cut out this particular segment that is relevant to how we are able to, you know, not only recognize how dangerous shaitan is, but also start in our um, uh, journey of uh, overcoming the um, snares of shaitan. Fakun ma'ahu. So you should be with. Fakun ma'ahu. Be with the shaitan. Kal gharib ma'a kalb ra'i. You should be with the shaitan. Your relationship with the shaitan should be like a foreign person in front of a dog. Where al rai uh, is, of course, the owner of the dog. al rai is owner of the dog. Um, and then, kal gharib ma'a kalb rai يَفْزَعُوا إِلَىٰ صَاحِبِهِ فِي صَرْفِهِ عَنْهِ Where the غريب person, for example, you're walking into someone's property, right? And you see the dog, and you see the owner of the dog. You, the outsider, you are going to run towards the owner of the dog. يَفْزَعُوا يَفْزَعُوا Illa sahibih, you're running towards the owner of the dog, fi sarfihi, in repelling. Yani you want the owner of the dog to stop the dog, fi sarfihi an, to stop the dog from, for example, coming towards you, attacking you. You're entering into this property, into this land, the dog sees you, the owner is also there, right? And then you head towards the, you run towards the owner of the dog uh, because you want the owner of the dog to stop the dog from running and attacking you. يَفْزَعُ إِلَىٰ صَاحِبِهِ فِي صَرْفِهِ يعني في صرف الكلب عنه عن الغريب from you 
repelling the dog from attacking you. Kadalik, the same <coughs> situation, the same thing. Ida attack as shaitan. If shaitan comes to you, whispering to you, Muwaswisan, Muwaswisan, whispering. Waswasa means whispering. If the shaitan comes to you, whispering, Liyudillaka an sabilillah, to turn you away from the path of God. Sorry. Liyudillaka an sabilil haq, to keep you, to turn you away from distract you from dis in distracting you uh, and turning you away from uh, the path of haq wa yunsika dhikrullah and makes you forget shaitan makes you forget remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you should be in relation to the god like sorry you should be in relation to the dog like you are as a gharib person entering into a land and you see that I see a dog. When you see that dog, you're going to run to the owner of the dog. When you see shaitan, you're going to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَذَلِكَ إِذَا أَتَاكَ الشَّيْطَانُ مُوَسْوِسًا لِيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ الْحَقِّ وَيُنْسِيكَ ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ And then we continue on uh, with this beautiful hadith. Inshallah, we will carry on in talking about this important topic of Tazkiyatul Nafs in our next episode. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin.